I'm Larry Ray, President and CEO of American Manganese, Inc. Listed on the TSX Venture, ticker symbol AMY, A-M-Y, with proprietary patents in the U.S., China, and South Africa. Our focus is on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. China recently legislated the responsibility for recycling onto their electric vehicle manufacturers and importers. For more information, please visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. Gem International is a new diamond explorer in the richest diamond producing country in Africa, located next to the fourth largest producing diamond mine in the world. International Spotlight is on an 1109 carat diamond recently discovered in Africa by a fellow Canadian junior. It is expected to sell in excess of 65 million US at Sotheby's, London, June 29th with a proven operator and finance team. Gem International trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol GI. Visit us at gemdiamondmining.com. Welcome to the Goddard Report. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. Here is Jim Goddard. We're chatting with Michael Rivero, founder and editor of WhatReallyHappened.com. Welcome back to the show, Michael. Thank you for having me. Financial markets around the world are reacting to the Brexit vote. England to break free from the European Union. Are you shocked by the move? I'm gratified by the move. Uh, It is certainly, uh, if they can succeed doing it, uh, and we're already seeing all kinds of uh, machinations going on at the European Union to try and block it, uh, it would be a good thing. Uh, uh, These grand supranational unions have turned out to be nothing but a raw deal for all the nations underneath them. And uh, the the, the big issue now, of course, is that technically this is a non-binding referendum, and it will be up to Parliament uh, to make the final determination. Now, the problem there, of course, is if Parliament ignores the will of the people, uh, they're going to be looking at being replaced the next time uh, they go up for re-election for their own office. Uh, the official numbers for the Brexit four-point spread uh, appear to be less than accurate. We know there was massive, massive election fraud on the part of the Remain people. All the polling places had uh, graphite pencils, which can be erased and and rewritten, and somebody actually got on video, one of the poll workers, erasing exit votes and rewriting them as remain. Uh, There was a woman, a volunteer, showed up at a polling place with ink pens so that people could make sure their votes couldn't be changed. She was actually taken away by the police. And the elections commissioner actually was forced to admit that while being tested, many of these ballot counting machines were only registering the remain votes uh, and ignoring the leave votes. But uh, the funny thing about election fraud is it can shift a result a few percentage points, but it can't reverse a landslide. And apparently they weren't prepared for just how strong uh, the leave vote was going to be. And there, there was a big fight all the way to the end. Uh, but in the end, uh, even by the official count, Brexit won. And so now we have uh, uh, Merkel, uh, and uh, the EU are already out there talking about a rush to impose a European super state in order to remove from the remaining European Union members their right to leave the Union under Article 50. And right now there are eight different member nations of the European Union are getting ready to hold their referendums because of what happened in Great Britain. That whole EU experiment uh, is going to implode, and of course this is a major, major setback for the planners of the New World Order global government. Well, the whole idea behind the EU was to make it a free trade zone, but the unelected bureaucrats in Brussels were interfering in people's private lives and overruling legislation made by their local legislatures. That was a big part of it. It was supposed to be a free trade uh, union. Uh, The trade turned out not to be free. Uh, The European Union uh, commissioners just got too big for their britches, and they started passing all these ridiculous laws like banning bananas that curl too much. Uh, it's illegal to eat your own pet horse. I mean, just ridiculous stuff that was out there. Plus, of course, the European Union was built with a self-destruct machine inside called the European Central Bank, which, as is the case with all central banks, plunges nations into poverty to enrich itself. Because all private central banks, whether it's a national bank, a union bank, or the global private central bank, by design, 
they create more debt than money with which to pay the debt until the debt crushes the system and the bankers can grab the real hard asset. And this is a scam the private central bankers have been playing on planet Earth for 300 years, and their grand g dream was a single planetary private central bank, and it's been dealt a major, major setback. What's the biggest problem with central banks? Is that they just favor the big banks and screw the little guy? No, the biggest problem with private central banks is they're managing the public currency as a privatized for-profit operation. Now, if you go back and you look at the founding of the United States of America, one of the revolutionary things they did there was to manage the public currency as a public utility, where it was out there to support commerce, it wasn't there to make somebody uh, money off of usury, and the system uh, was very simple. The government would coin and spend the money into circulation for what the government needed. The money would flow through commerce without accruing any interest and then was taxed back at the same amount at the end of the cycle to balance the books. And it's a system that works very well for the nation and the people, but the private central bankers were absolutely horrified at the idea of a nation providing its own money rather than borrowing it at, at interest from these private central banks. So they sent in uh, their agent in place, Alexander Hamilton, uh, who uh, was able to eventually convince the United States to submit to the first bank of the United States. It virtually wrecked the place, and Congress refused to renew its original 20-year charter, which led to Britain uh, starting the War of 1812 under uh, being goaded from the Rothschild family. Uh, even though the United States won the War of 1812, they were forced to allow a charter for the second bank of the United States, uh, to cover their debts, uh, at the end of its charter, Andrew Jackson ran on a campaign of no bank and succeeded in shutting down the second bank of the United States, at which point there was immediately an assassination attempt on his life. And this idea of banker-issued currency versus uh, government-issued currency flopped back and forth until about a 100 years ago when they set up the third bank of the United States of America. But they didn't call it that because they knew people would remember what had happened with the first two. So the Third Bank of the United States of America was created with the name Federal Reserve to make it sound like it's part of the government, but that's just a hoax. Uh, the Federal Reserve is no more federal than Federal Express. It's just a name they took to convince people that it's somehow part of the government, uh, but it really, really isn't. And like all private central banks, it does not serve the people. It does not serve the nation. It serves itself. And every nation enslaved to a private central bank is driven down into poverty and despair to make the bankers rich. And we need to get away from this model. Now, the good news is, in our current situation, because of economic globalism uh, and derivatives, all of these private central banks around the world are now inextricably linked together. When one goes down, it will drag the rest of them with it. And it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for the people of planet Earth to stand up and say, we're going to restart the economy. We're going to have a public currency that's managed as a public utility. No more private central banks ever, 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 ever. What's the truth behind Orlando? Uh, surprisingly, uh, a surprising lack of cell phone video of an incident where you'd think there would be 300 people inside a club all with cell phones uh, whirring away as it went down. Well, there there are so many things wrong with Orlando. I mean, first of all, they're thrashing around trying to find a motive for Omar Mateen. When it first happened, they said, oh, he was he was angered. He, two gay men had kissed in front of his child, and he was outraged because as a Muslim, he was, you know, anti-gay. Then we find out he's gay himself and a regular at that club. Uh, then they tried to go on out and say, well, it was a revenge killing because one of the club members may have given him AIDS uh, without telling him. Uh, the, the U.S. is still trying to push the terrorism angle. Everybody's pushing the gun grabber agenda. And now everybody's basically saying, well, we're never going to know what the motive really was. There are indications he may have been on prescription antidepressants, uh, going into this attack. But what's really interesting is there, there was so much phony video footage about this incident that was so easy to expose. And now we're finding out that between the time of the altercation outside in the parking lot, uh, uh, there wasn't any gunfire inside at all until the SWAT team arrived and kicked in the door. So this idea that he was in this building shooting people left and right, that's just gone out the window. And it, it, it appears to be another engineered false flag attack by the U.S. government to sell war on Muslims, to sell war on ISIS, 
uh, to convince us that there are all these crazies out there running around who wish us harm. Therefore, we should all give up our right to self-defense and trust the government will keep us safe. Did they do autopsies to see whose bullets killed who? Uh, not at this point. One of the things that's come on out, though, is that a lot of these people claiming to have been injured uh, are being seen just days later with no sign of the injury. One individual by the name of Colin Angel, which is a weird name right there, uh, was interviewed in the media uh, that he was shot in the hand by Omar Mateen, and that was followed up by a TV interview in his hospital bed. And during the interview, he's gesturing with his hands. There's no wound. There's no injury. There's not even a Band-Aid. And, 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 and it, it's fakery like this that everybody is saying it's just another in a long series of staged false flag incidents to sell political agendas, whether it's war on uh, ISIS, uh, whether it's war on our guns and our right to self-defense. And we don't really need to go into the fine details anymore. It's just another case of the government lying to us, controlling us with fraud and deception, and that, too, has to stop. We'll have more with Michael Rivero right after the break. Gem International is a new diamond explorer in the richest diamond producing country in Africa, located next to the fourth largest producing diamond mine in the world. International Spotlight is on an 1109 carat diamond recently discovered in Africa by a fellow Canadian junior. It is expected to sell in excess of 65 million US at Sotheby's, London, June 29th with a proven operator and finance team. Gem International trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol GI. Visit us at gemdiamondmining.com. I'm Larry Ray, President and CEO of American Manganese Inc. Listed on the TSX Venture, ticker symbol AMY, A-M-Y, with proprietary patents in the U.S., China, and South Africa. Our focus is on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. China recently legislated the responsibility for recycling onto their electric vehicle manufacturers and importers. For more information, please visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. In Goddard, we trust. Welcome back. We're speaking with Michael Rivero. The Brexit vote, will that help candidates like Donald Trump, who really wants to work on the anti-establishment feeling? Well, the biggest way that the Brexit vote is going to help Donald Trump is because it underscores the fact that the out-of-control refugee and immigration problem is a major, major issue. And I think where the Brexit, uh, the, the Remain camp, failed, uh, is they apparently actually thought that if they just went on out there and said anybody opposed to out-of-control, open-border refugees uh, was just being racist and intolerant, that that would shut them up, and clearly that did not happen. And so this is an issue, of course, that uh, Donald Trump is very much on, on board with, and it's hardly a unique idea. Uh, President Eisenhower advocated strong controlled borders. Teddy Roosevelt advocated that people who immigrated to the United States legally should adapt to our culture and our language. And these, these are common sense uh, 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 requirements uh, for people coming to this country. And instead, this rush to try and blur all of the people of planet Earth together into one formless mass with no clear idea who they are to make them easy to control is definitely falling flat on its face. Running mates, any idea yet who's going to team up with Hillary and who's going to team up with Trump? Well, at this point, it's looking more and more like Hillary may choose Elizabeth Warren uh, to basically head off the possibility that uh, Donald Trump may pick a, uh, a female vice president. Uh, at, at this point, it looks pretty obvious Bernie Sanders uh, has declined the offer to be Hillary's vice president. That's going to be a problem because about half of his supporters have said they'll vote for Donald Trump before they vote for Hillary Clinton. They're very angry over all the massive fraud that has been taking place during the primary season, uh, and they're willing to cross party lines uh, to, to not support Hillary Clinton. Trump wouldn't be silly enough to pick somebody like Sarah Palin, would he? No, I think that was Sarah Palin uh, wishful thinking. Uh, I think if Trump is very, very smart, uh, he's, he's basically going to pick a vice president who's fully on board with his economic and immigration policies uh, to deter the possibility of uh, uh, an assassination. We know that vested interests like Sheldon Adelson are trying to force Newt Gingrich on him, uh, but that would pretty much guarantee a target on Donald Trump's back. 
New evidence that cannabis does help cure cancer. Why not big publicity about it? Well, to protect the profits of the cancer industrial complex. The National Cancer Institute has admitted that, yes, the the evidence shows cannabis can cure cancer. But there's a problem with that. You can grow that in your backyard. And if you're able to grow your own medications in your backyard, then you are not going on down to the pharmacy and spending your money on these very expensive chemotherapy and radiation treatments. And so the reason this is not being promoted uh, is to protect the profitability of the medical industrial complex. In Canada, where the government has said it's going to legalize marijuana, they're still arresting people for simple possession. They're still busting people for growing their own marijuana, even if it, even if it's for medical purposes. What does that? What kind of a message is that? The message is that the government is uh, ba- basically becoming schizophrenic, where you've got this group of people with this agenda are doing what they want to do. And this other group over here is doing something different. A good example, of course, would be here in the United States where the Supreme Court just let stand a lower court ruling that Obama's plan to allow illegal immigrants to stay in this country if they have a child on our soil was unconstitutional. And Obama turned around and said to the Supreme Court, I'm going to ignore you. I'm not going to do a thing about it. What are you going to do about it? So we're seeing the government uh, of our country, of your country, it's factionalizing badly. And that that's going to lead to fragmentation. The F-35, the world's most expensive weapon system ever that still hasn't proven that it works. What's its latest defect? Its latest defect is the ejection seat, which apparently is so powerful that for pilots below a certain weight, it literally can break their necks as it fires out of the aircraft. Well, that's pretty unpleasant. Yeah, I imagine it really would be, and uh, uh, it, it is kind of amazing that it got this far along the development cycle before anybody realized uh, this was a major weakness. Uh, but the F-35 is typical of the U.S. military-industrial complex. It's hideously expensive. It's not very good. Uh, it can be defeated in dogfights by 1970s vintage aircraft. The computer software doesn't work. The so-called invisible cockpit system can't fuse uh, the images from all the sensors. Uh, it, it's not able to network with the other aircraft in its uh, in its flight, which was a big part of its defensive system. Uh, the software for the Canon isn't going to be ready till 2019, and they still cannot get those very expensive helmet control fire systems to work. Why not just build more F-18 Super Hornets? That would be the smart thing to do, uh, but again, that's not how the military-industrial complex works. There's a wonderful movie out there called The Pentagon Wars. It was directed by Richard Benjamin, and it's based on a book of the same name by somebody who was actually in the Pentagon, gone on the uh, development cycle of the Bradley Infantry Fighting Vehicle. And uh, it really does show you just how crazy U.S. military procurement is, and it's all about the money, and it's all about, you know, you're going to have a really good job with a defense contractor after you retire from the military, and you double dip, and... Uh, it, it is a comedy, but it's based on a true story. Is the U.S. going to ban GMO warning labels? Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, the Senate has already put together a proposal. They're calling it a compromise because GMO products are going to have a little tiny barcode on the label. But, of course, unless you're carrying a scanner, you don't know what the barcode actually means. So they're actually saying, well, there's, there's a label on GMO. It's that little barcode down there. But other than that, there will be no GMO labeling because, again, it's big business. Monsanto has invested a huge amount of money developing GMO. The rest of the world doesn't want it, so what are you going to do? We're going to force the American people to buy it and eat it. How successful has the Obama campaign been against guns? How many people in the U.S. are buying guns every day? Oh, he he has turned out to be the top gun salesman in the country. Uh, Every time the gun grabbers try and stage another false flag, uh, gun sales go right through the roof. People are buying guns. People are building guns. There's the Ghost 80 uh, weapons that are out there. And uh, the reality is that as American gun ownership goes up, the murder rate is actually going down, according to the FBI. And that, of course, is a, a tremendous problem for the gun grabbers who are trying to sell the idea that if we're all totally disarmed, uh, nobody will be killed. And, of course, if you look at what's going on over in Detroit, which has very, very strict gun control, 
or even down in Honduras, uh, where guns are absolutely banned for the law-abiding citizen, and you look at their murder rates and realize it's always been an inverse relationship. As the, the people are allowed the right and the means to defend themselves, crime goes down. Some years ago here in the United States, down in Georgia, there was a town called Kennesaw, and they had a big crime problem. So the city council actually passed a law saying every home in Kennesaw, Georgia, had to have a firearm, and they publicized it, and the crime problem went away because the criminals understood any home they broke into in Kennesaw, Georgia, there was a firearm and somebody ready to shoot back. Michael, thank you so much for chatting with us. Thank you for having me. My guest has been Michael Rivero, founder and editor of WhatReallyHappened.com. You're listening to the Goddard Report on TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Find us on Twitter at TalkDigitalNet. Our popular YouTube channel is TalkDigitalNetwork. If you have any questions for the show, you can email info at HowStreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Thanks for listening. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. The Goddard Report is available online and mobile at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. The Goddard Report is a production of How Street Media Incorporated.